The EU's power grab of financial firms has sparked a mass exodus of bankers from the City of London due to the lack of financial service provisions in the Brexit deal. Without any specific agreement on financial services, several banks such as Morgan Stanley, Barclays and Goldman Sachs have now moved senior bankers out of London. Instead, these firms have now looked to centres in Frankfurt, Paris and Milan. Due to the post-COVID phenomenon, some firms are also looking to relocate masses of workers by 2024. Indeed, Goldman Sachs has now swelled its workforce in Milan from 20 in 2017 to 60 due to the lack of an agreement on financial services. JP Morgan is also looking to move 200 more employees to the continent with many heading to Paris. While Paris has attracted the most people, Frankfurt has received the most jobs leaking from London with 7,600 now reported, according to Reuters. Due to the lack of provisions in the Trade and Cooperation Agreement, UK financial firms must now apply two sets of regulatory frameworks, also known as equivalents. As a result, many have now relocated to Europe to avoid the extra hassle. In order to stop the exodus of financial firms, many have called on the Prime Minister to agree a financial services deal with the EU although Brussels has stalled on doing so in order to pressure the UK over elements of the agreement. The UK and EU agreed on a Memorandum of Understanding in March to continue the cooperation between financial regulators but Brussels did not grant equivalents. The EU's financial services chief Merid McGuinness, we will resume our equivalence assessments once the regulatory cooperation framework is in place and do so on a case-by-case -case basis, taking into account the UK's regulatory intention. Brexit Britain has dismantled Project Fear Doom Mongers after official figures showed the UK's exports to the European Union have nearly already recovered after plunging by 40% at the start of the year. The latest data from the Office for National Statistics ONS, revealed goods exported to the bloc jumped 8.6% to £12.7 billion in March. This is just marginally off the £13.7 billion recorded in December, a month before Britain completed its departure from the European Union single market, which triggered an immediate 43.2% collapse in exports in January. Goods exports to the EU had plunged by £5.6 billion in January but the sector has defied gloomy project fear forecasts by quickly bouncing back as businesses familiarise themselves with the newly enforced Brexit trading rules. The prominent figurehead in the party said the UK was drawing a line under the UK's exit from the EU. His comments came just days after Labour lost the once safe seat of Hartlepool after the Leave supporting town backed the Tories in a by-election. Since the embarrassing loss for the Labour leader, Mr Burnham has made a series of antagonistic comments, with many believing the Manchester mayor is eyeing up a future run for the top job.
Talking about whether the UK could one day rejoin the EU, he told the London Economic, I think they have very much switched from the Labour Party perceived to want to stay in the EU as was, and people are embracing the fact that this is a new reality now in the UK, and I think that's the way everybody needs to embrace it. But the way we will approach things is to be true to Manchester's international perspective on life, its European roots, we want to carry on working with our partners and find a way of making Brexit work for our communities. Britons have reacted with fury after a British farming boss was left stunned by the EU's aggressive stance towards the UK following a crunch meeting. Martin Kennedy, president of the National Farmers Union Scotland was left shocked after attending a meeting with the EU Commission to discuss trade in the sector. After the meeting, Mr Kennedy revealed the EU's door to trade and compromise with the UK was now firmly closed despite being a vital partner. Following the news of the EU's harsh and aggressive stance to a supposed ally, Express.co.uk readers reacted with fury over Brussels' position. One person said, they are the same rivals as before Brexit but now more vicious and intent. It is war, treat it as such. In perhaps yet another sign the French establishment is getting rattled at the prospect of a victory for Marine Le Pen and her Rassemblement National Party in the forthcoming French presidential election, former EU negotiator Michel Barnier recently appeared to back a ban on French immigration. Speaking on the French public broadcaster, Mr Barnier appeared to propose a ban on migrants to France for three to five years. As with President Macron's recent tough talk, could it be that Mr Barnier is gearing up to enter the fray and outmaneuver Ms Le Pen himself? The timing is notable after a new open letter was published warning of the threat of civil war in the country. The message accused the French government of granting concessions to Islamism. You can read the rest of this comment piece here. Boris Johnson will secure a cast-iron Brexit with two new laws, as they could go a long way to making sure Britain's withdrawal from the EU cannot be reversed. In a recent report, head of Oxford-based think tank Euro intelligence Wolfgang Munchau, has drawn attention to two particular laws, which he claims, will help secure a cast-iron Brexit. He wrote, the first will be a new law on public procurement. The Queen's speech gave no details. We expect the equivalent of a buy British policy. The second law will be a new state aid policy, as it is known in the EU, or a subsidy control bill as it will be called in the UK. Emmanuel Macron and France have been slammed for blocking Jersey's Brexit golden opportunity and warned they need Jersey to sell its produce. The hostile situation between Jersey and France threatens to hurt both parties as Captain Baptiste Ganon told Sky News that he is gobsmacked by the fishing standoff.
Louis Jackson, a fishmonger, stated that everything was geared towards France and Brexit was an opportunity for Jersey to get a level playing field. Mr. Jackson, a resident in Jersey, told Sky, the concerning thing for me is the future of the fishing industry in Jersey. Because of Brexit, we have got a golden opportunity to change things and to be on more of an even playing field. At the moment everything is geared towards the French. It is totally one-sided, anyone can see that. The UK's fisheries minister has refused to apologise for the government's handling of the shellfish industry, as exporters who have seen sales to the EU plummet continue to pile the pressure on. Victoria Prentice, a parliamentary undersecretary in the Department for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs, DEFRA, conceded there was no silver bullet to solve the mounting problem, instead firmly pointing the finger of blame at the EU. Speaking at the Shellfish Association of Great Britain's annual conference on Wednesday, she said, the decision taken by the EU to ban the export of live bivalve mollusks, LMBs, from Class B waters is wrong. It is unfair, unjustified, and I want you to know that we stand with you and will help in any way that we can.